So you can see there my existing industry visits so far from, from last meeting. Outsource Logistics is one I met with and actually got uh, Dr. Plumley and Dr. Walker and Dr. Fowler from the Lando College of Business to meet with them. Uh, Paul Everett, who's the co-owner of Outsource, was very interested in some internships and wanted some, some of the business school folks over there. So we got them together and discussed the upcoming logistics program that they're going to start at Boston State. He was very uh, intrigued with that. And then I know uh, as of two days after we met, he already had 13 applications for interns to work there. So that was a very good, productive visit there. I uh, met with Urco Worldwide, Jeff Fault there. Didn't get a tour, but he offered me to come back anytime and tour. Hunt um, Industries, Letica, and then uh, Stuart and myself actually visited Sunset Farms yesterday afternoon. Uh, that's going to be the next main by Austin for the month of February, February. So we got a tour of their facilities and got to see how sausage was made. It was very interesting. So. <laughs> so. Any samples? No, but it smelled delicious. I almost bought a case right before I walked out the door, so. especially in the smokehouse. Um, I'm not sure what you said. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, some existing industry projects we have going on. Obviously, Smith Drug have projects still still going on. Uh, Roundtree Construction. We've been trying to get started. Uh, the weather has been kind of slowing them up, but they have until April 3rd to complete the project. It's the emergency exit. Uh, for our Zay West business part. Um, talked to Mr. Danny Roundtree today and he's hoping to get started this week on it. He said it shouldn't take him 15 days to do it properly. So. Uh, and then Nature Nates, they're coming along pretty well. Went up there today, took some pictures, all the plumbing's laid down, so they're, they're getting ready and laying the groundwork to lay the foundation here very soon. So hopefully, you know, once the foundation's done and dried up, it'll go up pretty fast from there. Um, that's just a couple pictures I had. Um, and then also, um, the one Georgia grant we were awarded for the water sewer extension uh, to, to go up Hunt Road. Uh, we were meeting, we met with DCA last week uh, to kind of go over the parameters of the grant and what we need to do and what rules we need to follow and all that stuff. So we're continuing to work with that. And hopefully we can get bids out on that project uh, here very soon. And then moving on to the Bastard Business Park Rail project. Um, a couple weeks ago, I got a notice from Norfolk Southern that the rail was in very bad shape. They had to close down part of the rail, actually, uh, until we got it fixed. So we, we got it fixed. Um, and we're hopeful they gave us 30 days to get it repaired. So. Um, I'll let Mr. Gutson kind of take it from there. We've been working on a few things to, to make those improvements. Sam, I have a question yes. before Mr. Gutson gets started. How is it that anyone would allow it to get in such a state of disrepair prior to notifying us? It seems like this is a lack of maintenance issue that we perhaps should have been informed a little earlier. And I'll take that, actually. Okay. So we have been maintaining it um, sporadically along the way. And we actually have it line item as a budget consideration um, from last year. But as we, because it is so costly, um, we have replaced, I think twice, we've made repairs to keep it operational. Um, I don't know that we knew it was going, we were going to get a Norfolk Southern letter that said, fix it now, or yeah. that just came as a... a yeah, but that, that's what I'm worried about, the letter. I mean, apparently this is something that they're able to monitor. What precipitated the, the letter? Did it just suddenly go plunk? Yeah, I can answer that. One of the rail joint bars broke. So where the rails joined together, they had separated. So that's a big no-no in the real world. Um, so he, we got it fixed the next day, actually, and um, he was like, well, you know, there's some other places along the spur that this could definitely happen, and if, it, you know, if the engine were to come out and fall, it would be a very bad thing, so, so we're moving forward. So Sam's been in a lot of conversations with Norfolk Southern. I think this is Norfolk Southern putting in writing with the actions yes. that we need to take focus of the time frame that we need to do it, yep. and where we, need to, where we need to adhere to the maintenance contract that we have with them on the spur coming off of the line. But we have been responsive, haven't we? Yes, absolutely, yes. definitely. Okay. Like within 
Like I said, he had it repaired next day. We've worked very closely with Letica as well as Norfolk Southern um, and our local um, gentleman here, Justin, who works on Southworks to get all of it done and have gotten it done within a timely fashion. And Letica has, to my understanding, has not missed a <laughs> week. Yeah, and that's what we've done. We've, we've developed a, a, a kind of a maintenance and construction agreement to get us over this little hump, and then with an idea of periodically inspection and, and maintenance, in other words, a monthly inspection to see if we need to replace any ties or any, any uh, switch plates. But I thought we already had a maintenance agreement in place. We're complying with it. We had a siding agreement with Norfolk and Southern. Okay. But we didn't have a monthly maintenance agreement. And this brought that up so that we would do it. We've okay. been we've been as as needed on an as needed basis repairing the, the, the ties or replacing the switches. And it's just come to our well, I mean obviously Andrea realized it had been fifteen years so it's time to, to, to start replacing some of it. That's what we're gonna do. The iron literally wore out. How much traffic is on that spot? Is it daily, weekly? Once a week? Once a week. Yeah, uh, let it go. They say they use it as about one to four cars a week, just depending on their demand. It's not that much. Yeah. And, and we agreed to do the maintenance and with Norfolk and Southern when it was put in mm -hmm. back in 2001, because at that time we felt like we'd have somebody adjacent. To the, to the east of us, and it would be more rail traffic. So that, it's our obligation to keep it up, and that's that's what we're going to do is enter into a, a monthly type okay. agreement for the maintenance. Anything else? Okay. That concludes my report. Thank you.